The city lights painted a glittering panorama outside the hotel window as the Skylar stole one last glance at herself in the mirror. Guilt masked by a veneer of excitement, she stepped into the dimly lit hallway, her senses heightened by the clandestine nature of her actions. As she approached the elevator, her phone buzzed with a call from Carter. Panic surged through her veins, but she answered, feigning casual innocence. Hey, babe, she said, her voice betraying the tension within. What's up? Carter's voice, once a source of comfort, now carried an edge of suspicion. Just checking in. Missing you? How's the conference? Same old, same old, she replied, eyes darting around the empty hallway. You know how these things go. Silence lingered on the line before Carter sighed. I miss you. And the kids miss their mom. When are you coming home? Home. The word echoed in her mind, a reminder of the life she was jeopardizing with each stolen moment. Before she could respond, Cooper's name flashed on her phone screen, sending a shiver down her spine. Got to go, babe. Work stuff, she said hastily, ending the call before Carter could question further. In the dimly lit room, Cooper's voice purred with familiarity. Everything okay. She hesitated, glancing at her reflection in the window. Carter just called. He's suspicious, Cooper. I can't keep doing this. Cooper chuckled, a sound that sent both comfort and apprehension coursing through her. Relax, sweetheart. We're careful. Besides, what he doesn't know won't hurt him. But the weight of deceit clung to her like a second skin. As she stood there, torn between the allure of the forbidden and the sanctity of her marriage, she wondered if the revelation she was hurtling towards would be the catalyst for her redemption or the final nail in the coffin of her once happy life. The airport terminal buzzed with the hum of hurried travelers, but the Skylar's focus narrowed to the voice on the other end of the line, Carter's voice, laden with a mix of concern and anger. Where are you? He demanded, his words cutting through the air like a jagged knife. Panic gripped her as she stammered, I'm at the airport, about to board a flight. I need to talk to you, Carter. There was a pregnant pause before he replied, Cock? About what? About how you've been avoiding me? About the lies? She swallowed hard, the weight of guilt sinking deeper. Carter, it's complicated. I... But he wasn't having it. Save it. You've been distant, and now you're running off to who knows where. With Cooper, I assume. She winced at the mention of Cooper's name. Carter, please, let me explain. His laughter echoed through the foam, bitter and devoid of mirth. Explain? There's no explanation for betrayal, for breaking the vows we made. I'm with the kids, and we're staying with my sister. Don't bother finding us. The line went dead, leaving her in stunned silence. The truth had spilled out, an unstoppable force that had severed the last threads of their unraveling marriage. A lump formed in her throat as she clutched the phone, realizing the magnitude of what she had just done. As she boarded the plane, the reality of her situation set in. The once familiar comfort of home, now fractured, felt like an elusive dream. In her heart, she knew she had to find Carter to face the consequences of her actions. Upon landing, she reached out to Cooper, desperation lacing her voice. Carter's avoiding me, Cooper. I need to find him. Can you help? Cooper's response was a mix of frustration and reassurance. I told you, sweetheart, this was risky. But fine, I'll pull some strings. Just be careful. We can't afford any more slip-ups. With a heavy sigh, she stepped into the unknown, determined to confront the wreckage of her marriage and salvage whatever remained. The airport lights flickered as if mirroring the uncertainty ahead, and she braced herself for a journey that held both the promise of redemption and the daunting specter of irreparable loss. 
the airport's hustle and bustle seemed to mock the Skylar as she emerged into the harsh daylight of an unfamiliar city. The reality of her choices hit hard, manifesting in the depleted balance of her credit cards and the looming uncertainty of her financial situation. A sense of desperation took root as she called her bank, navigating through an automated system that seemed to prolong her agony. Finally connected to a customer service representative, she heard the disheartening news. I'm sorry, ma'am, but your credit limit has been reached. There's no more available credit on your account. She clutched the phone, her mind racing. How was she going to bridge the gap between her and the family she had torn apart? Determined to find a solution, she dialed Carter's number, her voice shaky. Carter, I need your help. I can't get funds and I need to be there with you and the kids. Please. His response was cold and unforgiving. Help? After what you did, figure it out yourself. The line went dead, leaving her with the harsh reality that her actions had not only shattered her marriage, but also severed the lifeline of financial stability. She sat in a corner of the airport, surrounded by bustling travelers, feeling the weight of her consequences pressing down on her. In a desperate attempt to secure a plane ticket, she reached out to friends and family, exposing the painful truth of her infidelity. The conversations were laden with disappointment and judgment, each rejection driving home the isolation she had brought upon herself. As she scrolled through the flight options on her phone, Cooper's message chimed in, a lifeline in the storm of her despair. I've wired you some money. Don't screw this up. We can't afford any mistakes. Grateful yet uneasy, she accepted the funds, realizing that each dollar came with a price, a reminder of the tangled web she had woven. As she booked the ticket, the financial struggle became a stark metaphor for the cost of her betrayal, a debt that extended beyond credit limits into the very fabric of her fractured life. The plane ticket secured, she boarded the flight, acutely aware that her journey wasn't just a physical one. It was a reckoning, a confrontation with the consequences of her actions that extended far beyond financial strain, leading her into the heart of a storm she could no longer escape. The legal storm gathered momentum as the Skylar returned, like a prodigal, to the city she once called home. The weight of her actions bore down on her shoulders as she faced not only the emotional fallout, but also the ominous specter of potential legal repercussions. Carter had learned about the affair, and the icy detachment in his eyes spoke volumes. The walls of their home echoed with strained silence as he gathered evidence of her infidelity. Legal papers, divorce proceedings, and the looming threat of custody battles painted a bleak picture of her future. One evening, as the reality of her situation settled in, the Skylar sat across from her lawyer, whose stern expression mirrored the severity of the circumstances. This won't be easy, the lawyer warned, flipping through the legal documents. Carter has a strong case, and the evidence against you is substantial. We'll fight, but you need to be prepared for the worst. The Skylar nodded, her throat tight with anxiety. I just want to make things right, for the sake of our children. The lawyer's gaze softened, if only for a moment. It's an uphill battle, but we'll do what we can. Just be honest and cooperate. The court might show leniency if they see genuine remorse. As the legal proceedings gained momentum, the Australian government stepped in, offering legal assistance. A representative, stern-faced and professional, met with the Skylar to discuss the potential ramifications of her actions. We take family matters seriously, the representative said, peering over a stack of legal documents. Your case has garnered attention, and we want to ensure a fair resolution. However, you need to understand the gravity of the situation. The consequences of your actions could have a lasting impact on your family. The weight of responsibility settled heavily on the Skylar's shoulders as she contemplated the legal quagmire she had entered. Cooper's distant voice echoed in her mind, 
reminding her that the consequences reached far beyond emotional turmoil. Cooper's message buzzed on her phone. Don't let them break you. We'll get through this. Trust me. But trust had become a rare commodity, and the Skylar found herself caught between conflicting loyalties, the allure of redemption and the ominous shadow of potential legal consequences. As she faced the uncertain road ahead, she grappled with the realization that the legal storm she had unleashed might be the tempest that reshaped the landscape of her life. As the legal battles waged on, the emotional toll on the Skylar and Carter reached its zenith. The shattered remnants of their marriage lay strewn across courtrooms and legal documents, leaving both parties grappling with the wreckage of their once happy family. One evening, Carter sat alone in the dimly lit living room, surrounded by the echoes of laughter that had long faded away. The Skylar cautiously approached, uncertainty etched across her face. Carter, we need to talk. She began tentatively, her voice barely above a whisper. He looked up, his eyes revealing a mix of exhaustion and pain. Talk? What's left to say? After everything? Our kids are hurting because of your choices. She sank into the chair opposite him, the weight of guilt heavy on her chest. I never wanted this, Carter. I never wanted to hurt them. Or you. He scoffed, bitterness lacing his words. But you did. And now we're left picking up the pieces. Tears welled in her eyes as she tried to find the right words. I know I messed up. I can't undo what's done, but I want to make amends for our sake and the kids. His gaze softened, a flicker of vulnerability breaking through the walls he had erected. Amends? How do we even begin to fix this? As the days unfolded, Carter found solace in conversations with close friends and family. They urged him to consider the impact on their children, the possibility of forgiveness, and the potential for healing. The Skylar, too, sought support from those willing to lend an empathetic ear, understanding that the road to redemption was fraught with obstacles. One evening, they found themselves face to face in a mediation session, guided by a counselor whose impartiality aimed to navigate the emotional landmines that lay between them. The counselor spoke gently, you both need to acknowledge the pain and find a way forward. It won't be easy, but it's the only path to healing. Carter sighed, his shoulders slumping. I don't know if I can forgive her, but I can't let our children suffer indefinitely. The Skylar nodded, tears streaming down her cheeks. I never meant to hurt you or the kids. If there's any chance for redemption, I want to take it. I want to be a better person. The counselor's gaze shifted between them. Rebuilding trust is a slow process. Are you both willing to commit to it? The air hung heavy with uncertainty, but as their eyes met, a flicker of shared determination ignited. The emotional resolution, though a fragile beginning, hinted at the possibility of a future where wounds could heal, and the echoes of laughter might one day return to the home they had nearly lost. The Skylar's return home marked the beginning of a new chapter, one defined by the slow, agonizing unraveling of the threads that once bound her family together. The courtroom became the stage for the dissection of their lives, and each witness called forth pulled at the fragile strands of their shared history. Carter, stoic but pained, faced the questions that laid bare the depth of his betrayal. The evidence mounted, a damning testament to the affair that had eroded the foundation of their marriage. As the Skylar sat in the witness stand, the attorney's relentless questioning brought her face to face with the harsh reality of her choices. The room echoed with her admissions, each word driving a wedge deeper into the already fractured trust. The lawyer, a harbinger of the legal storm, interrogated her. Did you think about the impact on your children when you pursued this affair? Tears welled in her eyes as she replied, No, I didn't. I was selfish and I regretted every day. Carter, watching from the opposite end of the courtroom, clenched his jaw, a mix of anger and sadness etched on his face. 
the unraveling continued outside the courtroom as friends and family became unwitting participants in the aftermath. Conversations with those once close turned into awkward exchanges filled with judgment and disappointment. One evening, the Schuyler sat down with a friend, the tension palpable in the air. I never expected this from you, her friend said, shaking their head. How could you do this to Carter and the kids? The Schuyler's voice wavered as she struggled to find words that could bridge the growing chasm. I messed up, and I'm paying the price. But I want to make things right. I want to rebuild. Her friend sighed, a mixture of disbelief and concern in their eyes. Can things really go back to how they were? Trust is like a fragile thread. Once broken, it's hard to mend. The Skylar, grappling with the weight of truth, could only nod in acknowledgement of the daunting road ahead. Meanwhile, Carter faced a similar barrage of questions and judgment. A conversation with his sister revealed the depth of his internal struggle. I don't know what to do, sis, he admitted, his voice laden with exhaustion. I love her, but every time I look at her, I see the betrayal. How do I move forward? His sister placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. It won't be easy, but forgiveness is a choice. Only you can decide if you're willing to make it. As the threads of their lives continued to unravel, the Schuyler and Carter stood at the crossroads, uncertain of whether the path ahead led to reconciliation or further dissolution. The courtroom drama had exposed the raw wounds, and the true test lay in whether the threads that remained could withstand the weight of remorse and the possibility of healing. The courtroom, a solemn arena of judgment, became the battleground for the final act of the Schuyler's tumultuous journey. Witnesses had laid bare the intricacies of her affair, and as the legal proceedings reached their crescendo, the Schuyler steeled herself for the fallout. Carter, distant yet resolute, faced the judge and recounted the emotional wreckage caused by the affair. His words echoed through the courtroom, carrying the weight of betrayal and the shattered dreams of a once happy family. The Schuyler, seated alongside her lawyer, listened as Carter's testimony painted a stark picture of the irreparable damage. The judge, a figure of authority presiding over the unraveling lives before them, observed with a discerning gaze. Mr. and Mrs. Black, the court has heard the evidence, and it is evident that trust has been broken. The judge intoned, the gravity of the moment settling over the room. We must now determine the best course of action for the well-being of the children involved. Carter's lawyer stood, his tone stern. Your Honor, my client requests full custody of the children. Mrs. Black's actions have demonstrated a lack of judgment and consideration for their welfare. The Schuyler's lawyer, a pillar of support in the storm, countered, Your Honor, my client acknowledges her mistakes and is committed to rebuilding. She seeks shared custody and is willing to undergo counseling to demonstrate her commitment to the children's well-being. The judge's gaze shifted between the two legal representatives, considering the fate of the fractured family before them. Meanwhile, in the spectator seats, the Schuyler's parents sat with somber expressions. Her mother, struggling to contain her emotions, turned to her father. I never thought we'd see the day, her mother whispered, her voice breaking. How did we end up here? The father sighed, the weight of disappointment heavy in his eyes. People make mistakes, but this, this is a betrayal that goes beyond the two of them. The children are the ones who'll suffer the most. Back in the courtroom, the judge rendered the decision that would shape the future of their lives. Considering the circumstances, the court grants shared custody with mandatory counseling for both parents. Mrs. Black, you will need to prove your commitment to rebuilding trust and ensuring the well-being of your children. The Schuyler, a mix of relief and trepidation in her heart, nodded in acknowledgement. Carter's gaze remained stoic, a mixture of skepticism and a glimmer of hope. As the courtroom emptied, the Schuyler and Carter stood on opposite sides, 
the fallout of their choices settling around them like debris as after a storm. The road ahead was uncertain, but the judge's decision marked the beginning of a journey toward healing and redemption, or the continued unraveling of the threads that once bound their family together. With the courtroom drama behind them, the Schuyler and Carter found themselves at a crossroads, standing on the precipice of a future reshaped by the fallout of infidelity. As they contemplated the road ahead, the weight of their decisions lingered, casting a long shadow on the possibility of reconciliation. Carter, his gaze distant and contemplative, sat across from the Schuyler in the lawyer's office. The papers, now signed, symbolized the legal resolution, but did little to mend the emotional chasm that had opened between them. I agreed to shared custody for the kid's sake, Carter said, his voice measured but strained. But it doesn't change what happened or how I feel. The Skylar, her eyes brimming with regret, nodded solemnly. I understand, Carter. I never expected you to forgive me right away. I just want a chance to prove that I can change. He sighed, the weight of the past evident in his weary expression. Proving it won't be easy. It's not just about changing. It's about rebuilding trust. Can you really do that? She looked down, grappling with the enormity of the task before her. I'll do whatever it takes. For you. For the kids. For us. In the quiet aftermath of the conversation, the Schuyler sought guidance from a therapist, hoping to unravel the complexities of her own actions and pave a path toward redemption. The therapist, a seasoned professional, offered insights into the intricacies of rebuilding relationships fractured by infidelity. The journey to healing will be challenging, the therapist remarked, compassion in their eyes. But it's not impossible. It requires honesty, commitment, and a willingness to confront the underlying issues that led to this point. The Schuyler, a mix of vulnerability and determination, responded, I want to confront those issues, to understand why I made such a destructive choice. I want to be someone my family can trust again. As days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the Schuyler and Carter navigated the delicate dance of co-parenting. Dialogues became a bridge between past pain and potential healing. One evening, as they sat together for the first time since the legal proceedings, Carter broached a tentative conversation. I've been thinking about counseling for both of us. Maybe it could help. The Schuyler, hopeful yet cautious, nodded. I'm willing to try anything. For the kids and for us. Their contemplation of the future extended beyond their relationship, encompassing the children whose lives were irrevocably altered by the choices of their parents. School meetings, family outings, and shared responsibilities became the threads through which they attempted to weave a new, albeit fragile, tapestry. As the Schuyler faced the consequences of her actions, the path toward redemption remained uncertain. Carter, too, grappled with the decision of whether to rebuild what was lost or to forge a new path, unburdened by the weight of betrayal. In the twilight of their shared history, the Schuyler and Carter contemplated the future, aware that the threads of their lives had been forever altered, but hopeful that with time, patience, and genuine effort, a new chapter might unfold, one defined by resilience, forgiveness, and the possibility of healing.